Hey, this is Dr. Jeremy. How would you like to use electroacupuncture medicine to improve the quality of your patient's blood? We all heard in school that in order to nourish the blood, we should go to the herbs instead of acupuncture. However, that's not entirely true. Let me show you what I mean. I've taken a short video clip from one of my live events and turned it into a brief class containing one of my favorite protocols. I call this the blood electrification treatment. It has served me and my patients very well, and I can't wait to teach it to you. Now, if you like this information, I'll give you all the details on how you can attend my upcoming live event. Please enjoy. You're going to choose left or right. Yes, I and you're going to needle heart four, five, six, or end lung eight ish. Basically, we're aiming for the artery. Not, don't go in the artery. <laughs> <laughs> the, the blood is very uh, conductive. So you just want to get your needle close to the artery. So feel, choose your left or right, and then feel for your pulse. And then slip a needle next to the radial ar artery. Then feel for the ulnar pulse and try and slip a needle close to the ulnar artery. I drew that out for you so you know what I'm talking about. And you want us to kind of like thread the needle? Thread the needle with the flow of the channel. Okay. Now this shows doing it on both arms, but I only want you to do it on one arm so that you can do other stuff with your other arm. But what I want you to do is, you see how you sort of thread it, you connect the clip close to the skin and then I'm going to pass out tape for you guys. I guess you guys don't have tape, right? Yeah, I'll tell you right now. First of all, they're only vitamins and essential amino acids. The, one of them is vitamin E. One of them is D-L-phenylalanine, which we're going to talk about. It's essential, essential amino acid. One's tyrosine. And one's 5-HTP. So one's a precursor to serotonin. One's a precursor to dopamine and norepinephrine and one's a precursor to endorphins. So you connect the, the clip to the handle and then put the tape right near, on top of the clip, on top of the handle so it stays in place, so it'll stay good for about an hour. When everybody's hooked up, then we'll turn on the machines. Hard four, sorry, I didn't hear you. But kind of thread it, you're really aiming for those arteries. Feel the pulse and get your needle close to the artery. Two, on the heart. Two needles, one hand. Lung and heart. Lung and heart. Yeah. That's what I thought you yeah. It's really radial artery and yeah. ulnar artery on one hand. So if you notice in this slide, I do have it crossing the body. And you'll get, for your patients, I want you to do it like this because you'll get an extra 5 or 10% boost. In other words, you'll connect left lung to right lung and left heart to left to right heart. But for now, I wanted to keep one hand free for you guys. So this treatment is great for two main reasons. Um, maybe three main reasons. One is we have this thing called zeta potential, which is describing the negative charge on the outside of blood cells. So we have a bunch of slides one of them here, showing the effects of electrons. This is beforehand, and this is after 40 minutes of being grounded or touching the Earth, because the Earth has such a, as you know from foundations, the Earth has such a huge concentration of electrons that, and there's less in our body, so when we electrically connect to the Earth, electrons from the Earth flood us and fill us up. They go on the outside of the red blood cell and then negative repels negative. They call that zeta charge or zeta potential. So you can see how much more healthier. This is the before, this is the after. And again, clumping before and free flow after. So let's go, um, is everybody hooked up? Okay, so, um, and did you guys take your pills? Now, who takes vitamins every day religiously? So if you take vitamins every day religiously, I want you to set yours on 40 hertz. If you, who has not taken a single supplement in a week or two? In that case, set it at 4 hertz. And then I want you to turn it on so that you barely feel it. 
So the first, the first reason why we're putting electrons directly into the blood is this, to improve the quality. You can't really say that it's thinning the blood because it's not thinning the blood, but it is uh, returning it or restoring the zeta potential of what the red cells are supposed to be. The second reason that we're doing we're sending electricity into the blood is because we can create a situation in which the supplements you take um, absorb into the cells better. So if you use four hertz, and I have a slide on this coming up, and while you take a supplement, it's like 10, it, the, it's, your cells will absorb the substance 10 to 30 times more, which means it's, this is like a loading dose, so if you haven't taken vitamins or supplements in a long time and I told you to use 4 hertz, that's great for today, but you don't need it again tomorrow. Just, re just take the supplements regularly tomorrow. Put a lot of different examples of how just plain pure electrons improves the quality of the blood. And cardiologists are catching on and they can reduce uh, risk of cardiac incidence based on this. When they prescribe grounding for their patients, they have to go through a period of adjusting meds because the meds work better when the blood is in this more healthy condition. Okay, this is actually going the other way. So this is a regular average Joe's blood before a cell phone call. This is what happens after 10 minutes of cell phone call. The blood clumps. So this is dark field mic microscopy and they withdraw blood. Okay. And so, so that's just like the blood it's just in body. global blood. So the reason why we choose these points to put electrons directly into the blood is because that's where the artery comes close to the skin and it's easy for us to access. Uh, I've heard different things, but generally within 10 minutes, all the blood in your body is going to flow through here. I've heard one minute, I've heard 10 minutes, so I just tell you guys 10 minutes. But all the blood in the entire blood, body, every 10 minutes, goes past here. So if you have electrons going there and the blood is very electrically conductive, the electrons are going to go directly into the vessel. Aspirin irreversibly blocks the platelets from coagulating. And this is just putting negative charge on the outside of red blood cells, which is what they're supposed to be. We're supposed to be getting this charge from the earth, but we're um, insulated from the earth, so we don't, don't get the electron contact. That's number one. Number two, we're using cell phones, and this is happening. The cell phones are electron stealers. They're pulling it from our whole body, including the blood. So you're less likely to have a heart attack when you look like that, right? I mean, this is crazy after 10 minute cell phone call. These are after cell phone calls, so you can see uh, different people and how they clump after cell phone calls. The question is, does laser work equally? I can't say yes or no. I have a feeling it does. The difference between photons and electrons is not much. And Albert Einstein won his Nobel Prize for showing that when electrons hit something, they turn into photons and vice versa. So I don't know. I know this works. I haven't tried it with a laser. I do have a teacher that was able to reduce viral loads, HIV loads, using a laser irradiating the blood. The reason why we choose these points is because it's where the arteries come close to the skin. It's just easy access for us to put a needle there and get electrons directly into the blood. We have other areas on the body, such as the popliteal artery, where you may choose it for your patient. If you don't want to use these, you can use popliteal artery around bladder 40. You just feel for the pulsing and try to get your needle close to the pulsing. <coughs> and another one, dorsus pedis artery, is right there. So you know you can feel sometimes a pulse on the foot. Stomach 42 is a good place to access the circulation system. There's some good research showing that 
electricity increases cellular uptake. So, and here's the frequencies for that. So if you use four hertz, you're gonna get 10 to 30 times more cellular uptake of whatever you ate or whatever supplement you took. And you, know, you realize you have to be careful, so that's why they found that the faster the frequency, the less it happens. So when you get above 40 hertz, there's no effect on uh, supplements or food getting into the blood or the, into the cells more. Does that make sense? If you don't want, if somebody ate like these vitamins, but they take them every day and you don't want them to overdose, then use 40 hertz. Because 40 hertz and faster, and you've lost this effect of cellular intake. Does that make sense? 10 hertz is going to get you two to times more cellular intake. 4 hertz is the sweet spot to maximize cellular intake. If you go lower than 4, it's not quite fast enough. So every 10 minutes, the blood goes past here. You might miss some molecules if you go slower than 4 hertz. Does this make sense? This is great for loading, like I said, a loading dose for your patients. So somebody comes in, they're real deficient in, let's say, antioxidants. So I gave you guys vitamin E because vitamin E is the best blood antioxidant. It's fat soluble. Who knows what the best GI antioxidant is? Does anybody just scream it out if you know it? What'd you say? Uh, you can make an argument for that. I had in mind vitamin C, so we use, which is water soluble. We use vitamin C for GI antioxidant, and it's mandatory that we eat some every day because you know we can't make it. So every morning when you wake up, your body's starving for vitamin C. And here's the caution slide. Because this creates a situation where you're able to load the cells faster, you have to be very careful with certain things. One of the things you have to be careful with is garlic. Garlic, as you know, is extremely strong. So if you get 30 times more garlic into the cell, it could become toxic real fast. So this is the caution list. Vitamin A and D are tricky. You, you don't want to do this with vitamin A or D. It's easy to overdose on those also. And of course, you don't, herbal formulas, you can, I would start with 10 hertz, that way you're minimizing how much they're getting loaded with. And like I said, it's a loading dose, so for your patients, you're gonna only wanna do it like once or twice for them, and then have them take the supplement daily on their own. Of course, be so careful with pharmaceuticals. Can you imagine somebody's taking a statin drug and all of a sudden you've created a situation where the, the cells are absorbing 30 times more. So be very careful with your pharmaceuticals. The next reason why we electrify the blood or put electrons directly into the blood is because it's been found to inhibit all bacterial, viral, and fungal growth, which is pretty fantastic. So now you have a way of reducing viral loads. So one of my teachers was able to eliminate HIV and hepatitis B from the blood using electricity. And he did this every single day. What he actually did was pull the blood out, put electricity into the blood, and then put the blood back into the body. And he did that every day for 21 days and then retested these people after one year, five years, and 10 years. And the, um, the treatment only lasted for 21 days. After 10 years, the viral loads were still unable to be found. That was my teacher, but the research I put shows a lot of uh, different things. I think in the 90s at Albert Einstein University, they made a stimulator implant that they would put in the arm and they would attach the lead to the radial artery to constantly put electrons into the radial artery and this again showed great reduction in HIV virus loads. So we know this works. Help your patients get rid of their infections. A lot of us have low-level 
bacterial loads that shouldn't be there or viral loads that shouldn't be there or even fungal loads that shouldn't be there and this is a great way to help them. So it doesn't kill them but it inhibits their replication and then it makes it go away after a, a certain amount of time. Like over time they just die off because they can't replicate. Yes, but over time I mean like within a couple days usually. If you do this once for an hour and you check their blood two days later, the viral loads will be drastically, or the bacterial loads will be drastically reduced. So if you did this, let's say, once or twice a week for three months, then you'd be close to as good as possible for eliminating completely. You don't have to do an hour, although longer is better on this. Yes. So let's picture like an acute cold. You get home from work, you're starting to not feel well, you're like, uh-oh. You hook yourself up and you wear it for two hours. And most likely the next day you wake up feeling great. So the question is, is there a situation where you would not do this blood electrification? And we're specifically focusing on the antipathogen aspect, right? So you're going to use, you're talking about using above 40 hertz so you don't get the cellular uh, intake, uptake. Well, one is even though you're not getting the cellular uptake, you are getting the zeta potential on the outside of the blood cells and that can make pharmaceutical drugs work better. So the caution is to so be... Even if you're not Like if somebody's on blood thinners, and, but you're practically thinning even more, that's a kind of a contraindication. Unless you can work with their physician to reduce the meds. So specifically for people who are on pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals is a caution, yeah, okay. for sure. Um, there is another caution, and that is something called die-off. You can experience die-off. Um, Lyme disease is popping in my head. What happens if you try to kill Lyme disease or reduce Lyme disease too fast, the body has to deal or clean up from all that havoc. And people, patients can get symptoms such as headaches, body aches, flu-like symptoms. And actually, it can be dangerous. If a Herxheimer um, die-off can be dangerous. So with those patients, I would start 15 minutes. If, so Lyme and Candida are two where that I'm thinking about right now where you can get die-off symptoms. And those patients, I would start 15 minutes. And then if they did fine, next treatment, 30 minutes. And then if they did fine, I just keep increasing until I get up to an hour worth of blood electrification. And the way this works, let's say a patient comes in and I see, they, they tell me they have a head cold. I'm going to start this right away because it has to go a full hour. I'm going to tape it just like I showed you guys. And then I'm going to go about my other treatments to help them. Back pain, neck pain, whatever it is. And you can still stim other stuff. You can stim other stuff okay. completely, yeah. So that's a good point. He's asking about bacteria in the blood versus the rest of the body. And unfortunately, this only works on the blood. That's good and bad. In one way, you can make an argument, well, blood has to perfuse almost every tissue. So you are reducing the loads in the blood, and that blood is feeding all the tissues. Um, but I do have a feeling that these little buggers are able to hide in the lymph nodes. And in that case, uh, you would need... They're, they are perfused. What I want to tell you is that if you're reducing the viral loads or bacterial loads in the blood, that goes a long way to your body allocating, other re allocating the resources to other parts of the body. To get into the lymph nodes, you would want to use electromagnetics, like pulsed electromagnetic frequencies. They go through things, they get deeper into the lymphs. So 
I'm showing you blood electrification, but you got to be sure to separate it into your mind into a couple different treatments. One, you can do this to absorb the supplements better. Or you can ignore that and just do it to reduce blood pathogens. Either way, you're increasing zeta potential on the outside of the blood cell. This is, this is showing you change in blood stagnation before on the left and after on the right, for sure. We already went over how to increase zeta potential, get rid of blood stagnation, save somebody or reduce their cardiac risk by putting zeta potential or electrons on the outside of the blood cell, right? We went over how to give a loading dose of supplements by using the low frequency at the same time putting electrons directly into the artery. We went over a couple different locations you got radial and ulnar artery, you have palpiteal artery, and you have dorsus pedis artery. These are all in your book. But when you're at home, if you're treating yourself, these are just so convenient, right? Look for a link below this video and click on it to get all the details.